scientists have recently confirmed that a mysterious and incredibly energetic cosmic ray particle has hit Earth. This minuscule particle possessed an astounding energy level exceeding 240 exa-electron volts. To put that in perspective, that's comparable to the kinetic energy of a high-speed baseball or the impact of a lead brick falling on your toes from waist height. While it might not seem extraordinary at first glance, it's astonishing when you realize that all this energy is packed into a space smaller than an atom. The energy of this cosmic ray particle is about a million times greater than what our most advanced particle accelerators can generate. This particle, named Amaterasu, after the Japanese sun goddess, is the second most energetic cosmic ray ever detected on Earth. The record is still held by the Oh My God particle, which was discovered in 1991 with an energy of 320 exa-electron volts. However, the intriguing part comes from tracing Amaterasu's origin. Scientists found that its source lies in a region of the sky where no known object could produce such a high-energy particle. Dubbed the Oh My Goddess particle, Amaterasu appears to have come from a mysterious, seemingly empty region known as the local void. The energy of this cosmic ray particle is about a million times greater than what our most advanced particle accelerators can generate. Additionally, similar to the Oh My God particle from 1991, Amaterasu has broken the theoretical energy limit proposed for cosmic ray particles traveling over certain distances in the universe this suggests the existence of an extremely powerful nearby object or an unknown mechanism that produced this particle. But what exactly are cosmic rays and what are they made of? How did scientists detect Amaterasu in the first place? Finally, and most importantly, why is detecting this particle such a significant breakthrough in physics and astronomy? Understanding these questions could unlock new knowledge about the universe and the forces at play within it. Cosmic rays are high-energy particles originating from outer space. Their discovery traces back to 1912, when Austrian physicist Victor Hess conducted high-altitude balloon experiments, detecting heightened ionization levels in the atmosphere. This pivotal discovery challenged the prevailing notion that radiation was solely an earthly phenomenon, suggesting the existence of penetrating radiation from space. Composed primarily of protons, which make up about 90% of the total, cosmic rays also include approximately 9% alpha particles, helium nuclei, and a smaller fraction of heavier nuclei and electrons. The sources of cosmic rays are diverse and include phenomena such as supernovae, pulsars, and active galactic nuclei. While some cosmic rays emanate from the sun, particularly during periods of heightened solar activity, like solar flares and coronal mass ejections, the more energetic and expansive ones are the galactic cosmic rays. These rays are believed to originate from various sources within our galaxy, including supernova remnants, pulsars, and potentially the vicinity of black holes. Moreover, there exist extragalactic cosmic rays that likely stem from even more distant and potent sources in the universe, such as quasars and active galactic nuclei. The energy spectrum of these cosmic rays is vast, ranging from 1 million electron volts to over 50 exa-electron volts, with the latter category termed extreme energy cosmic rays. To date, only two particles have surpassed an energy level of 200 exa-electron volts. Both the Oh My God particle and the Amaterasu particle have left astrophysicists puzzled. But how were these particles detected in the first place, and what's their source of origin? Amaterasu was discovered by the Telescope Array experiment in Utah. A common question is how such a particle is detected. To understand this, one must first grasp the events that occur when a cosmic ray particle collides with the Earth's atmosphere. When cosmic ray particles, 
primarily consisting of protons and atomic nuclei, enter the Earth's atmosphere, they initiate a chain of reactions. These particles collide with nuclei of atmospheric atoms at altitudes ranging from 10 to 20 kilometers above the Earth's surface, resulting in the formation of a variety of secondary particles. This process creates a particle shower, which includes pions and cons that are inherently unstable and quickly decay into a range of other particles, notably muons, neutrinos, and a cascade of photons, electrons, and positrons. The secondary particle shower generated by cosmic ray collisions in the Earth's atmosphere also includes an electromagnetic cascade. The cascade occurs when photons, electrons, and positrons interact, resulting in a rapidly expanding cone of billions of secondary particles. Detecting these cosmic rays and their secondary particles involves sophisticated techniques. At the Telescope Array in Utah, two primary detection methods are employed. The first method utilizes an array of 60 telescopes strategically positioned to scan the sky in all directions. When cosmic ray showers interact with atmospheric nitrogen, they excite the nitrogen molecules, which subsequently emit fluorescent light, known as Cherenkov radiation, primarily in the ultraviolet spectrum. The telescopes are tasked with detecting these ultraviolet trails as they traverse the atmosphere, enabling detailed analysis of the shower's longitudinal development. The second approach to cosmic ray detection entails scattering scintillator detectors across the desert floor. These detectors are designed to capture the secondary particles produced by cosmic ray showers upon interaction with the Earth's atmosphere. These detectors, roughly the size of ping-pong tables, are constructed from a plastic material that emits light when charged particles pass through them. The telescope array boasts 500 such scintillator detectors strategically positioned at intervals of about 3 far 4 of a mile or approximately 1.2 kimani. During a typical particle shower, only a subset of these detectors is activated. However, the shower induced by Amaterasu was so energetic that it triggered 23 scintillator detectors. This broad activation pattern is remarkable especially given the significant spacing between the detectors. Through meticulous analysis of the timing and trajectory of the shower as it interacts with each detector, scientists employ simulations and computer models to backtrack the shower to its point of origin. When researchers endeavored to pinpoint the origin of Amaterasu, they made a staggering revelation. Tracing a cosmic ray particle back to its source presents a formidable challenge, mainly due to the fact that most of these particles carry an electric charge. The charge carried by these particles makes them susceptible to deflection by electric and magnetic fields as they traverse space. However, in the case of Amaterasu, which possessed incredibly high energy, electromagnetic influences were unlikely to significantly alter its trajectory. The potential challenge lies in the GZK limit, also known as the grison zatsapin kuzmin limit. This limit acts as a cosmic speed bump for high-energy particles traversing through space. Imagine cosmic rays as super-fast cars speeding across the universe. As they journey, they can collide with tiny particles of light from the cosmic microwave background the residual glow from the Big Bang. When a cosmic ray collides with one of these light particles, it slows down, akin to a car hitting a speed bump. This deceleration imposes a limit on the maximum energy these cosmic rays can possess by the time they reach Earth. The GZK limit for a proton, for instance, is 50 exa-electron volts, considered the maximum energy attainable. Amaterasu manages to preserve its energy over immense distances of approximately 160 million light-years. 
while numerous celestial bodies within this range have the potential to generate cosmic rays, none seem capable of producing particles with such extraordinary energies. Despite the significant power of phenomena like supernovae, kilonovae, and even hypernovae, they lack the capacity to generate cosmic rays of comparable intensity. Tracing the path of Amaterasu directs us towards the local void, an expansive and seemingly desolate region in space adjacent to the local group, which encompasses our Milky Way galaxy. This vast expanse in the universe piques our curiosity because unlike the densely populated star-studded regions we commonly observe, it appears largely devoid of galaxies, stars, and other visible matter. However, the challenge persists as astronomers have been unable to identify anything in the local void capable of producing extreme energy cosmic rays. A common question that arises is whether this particle truly traversed millions of light years or if it possibly originated within the Milky Way, thereby avoiding energy loss in intergalactic space. Astronomers have largely dismissed the notion of a galactic origin, primarily based on the particle's energy. John Matthews from the Telescope Array Project explains that while the Milky Way can generate cosmic ray particles with energies ranging from 0.1 to 10 exa-electron volts, producing a particle with hundreds of exa-electron volts would require an extraordinarily violent object. Such an object would need to possess incredibly high electric and magnetic fields, as well as a sufficiently large area to contain and accelerate the particle. Currently, there is no known object within the Milky Way capable of generating such a high energy particle. So the question remains, what's really going on? There are four potential explanations for the mystery particle, three of which could lead to groundbreaking discoveries in physics. The first hypothesis suggests that Amaterasu might be an iron nucleus rather than a proton. If true, it would possess a lower charge to mass ratio, a much higher GZK cutoff, and be more susceptible to deflection by electromagnetic fields in space. This could imply that its origin lies elsewhere, outside the local void. The second theory proposes the existence of an unknown, highly violent object, possibly located in a galaxy beyond the Milky Way, capable of producing such extreme energy particles. This object might be an exotic star characterized by extraordinary density and electromagnetic fields undergoing intense disturbances or outbursts. The third possibility considers the existence of a massive yet unidentified particle in the universe. This particle could be decaying, thereby producing particles with energy levels in the thousands of exa-electron volts. It might even be a dark matter particle not currently accounted for in the standard model of physics. Lastly, the fourth theory challenges the validity of the GZK cutoff. It suggests that particles with energy levels in the thousands of exa-electron volts might overcome collisions with the cosmic microwave background radiation through some as yet unknown mechanism. Among these four hypotheses, the possibility of Amaterasu being an iron nucleus or a flaw in the GZK cutoff is more plausible. This is because it's not the first time an extreme energy cosmic ray particle has been detected. Dozens of such particles have been observed in the last few decades. Whatever the reason, Amaterasu is a significant messenger from the universe, one that has the potential to unlock new realms of physics.